I just thought I'd do a couple quick tutorials from some of the machines that I made in my 100 Days in the Space Age video that were too complicated to, I guess, explain or show in depth in that video because it would have taken too long. But if you want to actually build that stuff for yourself, well, I'm going to be showing you today. And you can also play that mod pack as well if you join my Discord server. And then you can find a Space Age content mod pack there. Eventually, the full mod pack, complete with like crafting recipes and uh, config tweaks, will be on Curse Forge. But for now, you can play all the mods if you want. I'll just be showing you real fast how to build the exact same molten salt reactor and heat exchanger setup that I made in my video. And it's it's not too difficult to build. The difficult part is getting the materials. So you're going to want to start with reactor frames. And you're going to put six of them like that. And then you're going to do that on the other side as well. Fill that in here. And then we're going to put molten salt reactor walls here. Now there's walls. And then there's like salt, molten salt reactor glass, and those are interchangeable. It doesn't matter which you use, but you do have to have the frames around all the outside as like a border. So we're going to bring this up three blocks and then fill all these in. Once all the frames are done, it should look like this. So we're going to just end up using glass for all the rest of the wall areas. And we're going to put right here a molten salt reactor controller. Now we're going to place a vent here, molten salt reactor vent. Then we're going to have a fission vessel there, and then we're going to shift right click on it, which will change the opposite side of this block, and it'll change it to default, which is what we want. Then we want this to be fuel spread. And then if you hold the molten salt fission vessel and hold down shift, it will copy the settings each time you place it down. But we're going to have three of them, and the third one, this is going to be depleted out. Now we're going to take a hardened fluid duct because that's what I used. You can use other types of them, although I recommend still using hardened because otherwise it's likely to uh, explode. And so we're going to place a servo there. We're just using the regular servo because that's what I used. You can use better ones if you want. And we're going to change that to ignored. And now we're going to place a molten salt reactor vent there on that side. Now we're going to come back to this side, place another vent down, and we're going to get a coolant heater. We're going to place a coolant heater there toggle the opposite side to default then this is going to be coolant spread then we're going to do this we're going to hold down shift and copy those settings this is going to be hot coolant out and we're going to place another coolant heater up here and that's going to be hot coolant out you're going to toggle this coolant heater this side of it to be coolant spread that's going to be default now we're going to place a hardened fluid duct and then we're going to get the servo set that to ignored and now we're going to place a molten salt reactor vent right there and that's where we're going to be taking the hot coolant out which we'll explain in a second and putting it into heat exchangers so we're going to bring fluid ducts all along here so that it joins into that and then we're going to get our crescent hammer separate that and we're going to separate that so this is our depleted fuel output down here and this is our hot coolant out it doesn't matter if you put this like reactor vent here or here but just for the sake of like it being a little bit separated we're going to put it up here you're going to put a servo here, servo here, both of them set to ignored, ignored. Let's make sure that's ignored. These are all ignored. So that should be all set. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill this in with glass. We're going to fill in the top with reactor glass. And now if we go to the controller, uh, actually, we need to put glass over here. Now, if we go to the controller, it'll show two by two by four molten salt reactor, three fission vessels, four cooling heaters, and it's not active right now. Let's get a lever. We can stick the lever there. And there's a lot of other stuff that you can do with these molten salt reactors, but this is just the exact design that I use. So I'm just showing off of this. There's other tutorials if you want to see more complicated designs, but this is a fairly simple one. So right here, we've got a portable hardened tank with 80 buckets of fuel. And I think I had like 20 or something, but the fuel doesn't really matter for this video, but the amount of the eutetic knack redstone mixture is what matters. And I will, in a different tutorial, show you how to automate this stuff, but that'll be for a different video. Now we're going to place down two fluid ducts right there, and we're going to make sure we separate them before we're doing anything else. Otherwise, it'll uh, put in the wrong fluid into the wrong spot. So now we're going to take our portable tank here of a molten flab salt solution of LAU-235 fluoride fuel, which is the fuel I used in my video, and we're going to right-click it with the Crescent Hammer, set it to output, and you'll see that it starts draining into here and it goes into these fission vessels. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 20 buckets of eutetic knack redstone mixture, actually 22, that's roughly what I had. And also the amount does matter, that's why I'm not just doing like a full amount, 
because you have to do some stuff differently if you have a lot versus a little bit of the attack neck. So this just goes right there, and we're going to change that to output, and that's going to start dumping the eutetic neck into here. As you can see, it's going into all of these coolant heaters, including the one up top. And if we look right here, there's about 10 buckets left over from this empty thing. Now we're going to remove this because that's actually going to be the input for the uh, like cool down eutetic neck once it's uh, heat transferred. Basically, now we can turn this on. There's no heat gen, but what it does do is it heats up our eutetic neck, as you can see, hot eutetic neck alloy, while our depleted fuel is coming out here. So let's just turn this off real fast. And if you come over here, you'll see that it does use it up. In other words, it heats it up pretty quickly. Now that you know how to do the molten salt reactor, I'm going to show you how to make the heat exchanger. And you're going to make two of them uh, exactly the same. So I'll show you how to make one, and then you're just going to repeat it. So I made it basically the exact same size, so it's like 6 by 4 like this. And we build it essentially the exact same way as that, only with uh, heat exchanger blocks instead of the molten salt reactor. So you build the frame out of the heat exchanger frame blocks and then we can fill in glass here and we can come over here put the heat exchanger controller down fill this in with glass then we're gonna go over here and this is a little bit different than the other one so we're gonna be taking our thermoconducting alloy heat exchanger tubes there's two less good uh, versions of them but for the sake of being creative and also that is what I used we're going to be using the best version. So right here, this is going to be our hot eutetic neck alloy input. So you're going to place one of these down and change the opposite side to default. And then this is going to be input spread. Then you're going to put down an additional three of them. This is going to be product out. You can put a heat exchanger vent there. We actually have to destroy that for now. Uh, we'll replace in a sec. But you're going to place another heat exchanger vent. And you're going to place another row of tubes. But this time, they're going in a different direction. So that's going to be default. That's going to be input spread. You're going to put three more down like that. That's going to be product out. And then another heat exchanger vent. And now we can place our glass here. And we can place our glass on the top like this. What you're going to need to do now is pump water into this vent here. So we're going to place that down. And we're also going to do that with our fluid duct and unlink that. Basically, this is a dense infinite water source. You might like not even have infinite water sources. You might have to just actually pump water continuously in. But if you have these, then you can just stick one right off of the vent. And if we look into here, you'll see that there is water in this row of the heat exchanger tubes. And right here, this heat exchanger on this side on the water row is the high pressure steam output. So we're just going to take that up and we're going to place a, another one of these... Um, fluid ducts here we're going to unlink that because this right here is our hot eutetic knack alloy input so that's right here we're going to bring this down like that and now that should fill up once we add a servo set that to ignored you can see it's draining and it should be going into these yep that's where it's going and now if we were to turn this on you can see it's 100 percent efficiency if we turn that on and we take a look over here, we should be getting our cool down eutetic knack redstone mixture. And right here, we're getting high pressure steam, which is exactly what we want. So this is working correctly. So let's turn this one on and now real fast. And if we leave it on long enough, it's eventually going to drain the eutetic knack redstone out of this vent. And it will also eventually drain it out of the coolant heaters. So what you have to be careful with is if you don't have a lot of eutetic knack, then it's going to eventually drain out of the coolant heaters, and then the reactor will start producing heat, and then it will eventually melt down if you don't turn it off. So that's what we have to be careful of. There's no more eutetic knack in here, so if we look into this, that's starting to get consumed. So let's just wait a sec, and eventually that coolant heater will go offline, and the reactor should start producing heat. As you can see there, we're now generating heat because it just lost some of the coolant in one of the heaters. So if we turn this off and we look into here, there's basically no coolant in this or this one. So that's that's what you have to be careful of if you don't have a lot of eutetic neck, is you have to turn it on and off so that it can have time to replenish its coolant. And it replenishes the coolant from right over here. You can see that we have liquid eutetic neck redstone mixture. And now this thing, the heat exchanger, uses the uh, hot eutetic knack 
much more slowly than it is created. In other words, you don't have to turn this on very often. So now we're just going to take our hardened fluid duct and we're going to run it all the way over here and it's going to go back into this input. And once we link that up and we give this a servo, we should see that this is all taken out. Yep, it's getting taken out and it's getting put back into here. So that's replenishing our eutetic neck in the heat exchanger. We also have a great deal of high pressure steam here. And now this thing will shut off uh, if the tubes here become full of high pressure steam like that tube is shut off. You can see that it's only at 75% efficiency. So it doesn't hurt it if it like starts to go down in efficiency like it doesn't overheat or anything. So it can't really melt down as far as I'm aware. So what you're going to want to do now is build one more heat exchanger, maybe like over here. And I'll show you what you can do with that to turn the high pressure steam into the normal steam. So the purpose of the second heat exchanger is if you don't want to make a high pressure steam turbine from nuclear craft and you want normal steam that you could use in like the uh, immersive technology steam turbine. So basically we're going to once again put our water right here and we're going to do that and we're going to unlink that. So now if we look into here, these are all filling up with water. That's good. And we're going to want to place two fluid ducts here, but they are going to remain linked and we're going to place a servo here. And I'll explain why in a second. So right here is our high pressure steam output. So that just needs to be run into here. And you'll see that once we add a servo to this, this will start filling up with high pressure steam and it will go into here. So once we turn on this heat exchanger, it will start using the water here as a coolant. And as we can see here, now we have a ton of steam being produced. If we look into here, these are all filling up with normal steam. The great thing about this is that it's almost self-sustaining because when you put in this water to cool down the high pressure steam, that water has to take the heat and the water takes the heat and turns back into high pressure steam. So you actually get way more high pressure steam going like back into it than you initially put in. So you get even more steam than just like the amount that you would if you only had high pressure steam from this. Because this thing here produces its own high pressure steam in its own right. It's kind of complicated, but basically it's almost self-sustaining. It's not quite, if you have no like additional high pressure steam being added from the initial heat exchanger, it will eventually run out, but it does go for much longer than normal. So you really don't even need to run these very often, especially the molten salt reactor. That's what you need to run the least. But this is the setup that I used in my video and now you know how to build it for yourself. Like I said earlier, I'll do a tutorial on some of the automation processes that I did for like the fuel and the eutetic knack. But yeah, it's a pretty simple design. The non-simple part of it is just having to get the blocks to begin with. That's the hard part. But once you get the blocks, these are fairly simple designs. You technically could make them smaller, but I left room in the top here for stuff like this. And if we ever wanted like more heat exchanger tubes to make it faster for whatever reason. Hopefully you guys found this video useful and if you did consider dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. But that's going to be all for this video guys. Thanks for watching. I've been Speed and I'll see you in the next video or live stream. Bye.